Hurricane Florence's winds have begun to whip to warn would cause catastrophic flooding across a wide swath of the U.S. Southeast. According to the National Hurricane Center, the center of Florence is expected to hit North Carolina's southern coast today, then drift southwest before moving inland on Saturday. More than one million people had been ordered to evacuate the coast of the Carolinas in Virginia and thousands moved to emergency shelters in the wake of the storm. U.S. President Donald Trump has disputed uh, Puerto Rico's uh, official death toll of 3,000 from last year's Hurricane Marias. Another hurricane barreled towards the southeast. Trump went on to accuse uh, Democrats of inflating the death toll to make him look bad without providing evidence. Puerto Rico's official death toll from the storm was revised last month from 64 to nearly 3,000. Trump's tweets has drawn the ire of San Juan mayor who has sharply criticized the president for slow response to the storm last year. Visit Minister Dominique Raab has said that he was uh, confident of getting a good exit deal with the European Union but maintained that Britain must be prepared for the possibility of leaving without an agreement. Earlier on Thursday, the government had published the second set of advice notices for businesses and consumers on preparing for a no-deal Brexit, warning it could increase mobile phone roaming charges, upset data sharing and force motorists to get an international license to drive in Europe. President Emmanuel Macron has unveiled an 8 million euro plan with a focus on getting people into work and protecting vulnerable youngsters. Macron said that the French welfare state had failed to root out the cause of poverty with his popularity slumping. A former investment banker wants to convince left-leaning voters that his reform agenda does not only benefit the wealthy and company's opponents, has dubbed president a president of the rich, attack that has hurt his image. Nearly 9 million people in France, a third of them children, live in poverty. New York auction house Christie's has revealed what will they say be the most uh, expensive work of art by for a living artist ever sold at auction. The piece portrait of an artist by British artist David Hockney has been set at about $80 million for auction. The 1972 creation that Christie's described as iconic and one of Hockney's greatest works will go up for auction in November. According to Christie's, after destroying his first attempt at the painting, Hockney recreated the work of using photographs as a guide and painting for two weeks to get it ready for an exhibit in New York. U.S. Energy Secretary Rick Perry has told his Russian counterpart that Moscow should not use energy as economic weapon. Perry made clear to Russia, Energy Minister Alexander Novak, that competition with Russia on oil and gas markets across Europe, Asia and elsewhere is welcome. But using energy as a weapon is unacceptable. A Russian state energy company Gazprom has in the past cut off gas to Ukraine and onward to Western Europe during price disputes in deep winter and imposed bans on customers reselling gas to other countries. As rebel held Idlib braces itself for a possible offensive by the Syrian government, a group of observers, coders, engineers and volunteers prepare to help civilians through an early warning alert system. The system warns people ahead of an airstrike, giving them a chance to take cover from the bombs when a military aircraft thunders into the sky 
An observer takes note of the details, opens a phone app and enters the information into three designated fields. The data is processed by the program which then sends a warning triggering loud sirens. The UN has shared the GPS coordinates of 235 protected sites in the Syrian province of Idlib, including schools and hospitals, with the Russia, Turkey and US-led coalition amid fears of an all-out military assault. The UN is working around the clock to ensure assistance if an estimated 900,000 people flee the rebel-held areas. UN is hoping for a peaceful solution but continue to put in place its preparedness response plan. Ghana bid farewell to former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan in a full state funeral attended by African and international leaders who hailed his record as an advocate for humanity and world peace. Annan's coffin was placed atop of cannon to make the final journey to the cemetery where a small private ceremony was held. A Ghanaian official, a national and Nobel laureate, the former Secretary General died in a Swiss hospital last month at the age of 80. Anand's body was flown to Accra for burial in his homeland, where he is seen as a national hero. German police has dismantled three houses built by activists in a forest near the Dutch border to prevent an energy company from uh, logging it for the purpose of expanding its coal mining activities in the area. Riot police used cranes to bring down environmental activists who for five years had been living in the houses in the ancient Hambach forest. The forest was purchased by utility RWE decades ago for mining. Most of the forest had already been logged down and activists were trying to prevent the remaining patch of green from facing a similar fate. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's international media spokesman has said he was taking a leave of absence to clear his name of accusations that he denied. David Keyes did not give details of the accusations but has in recent days made statements in the Israeli media denying accusations of sexual misconduct posted online by a woman from his native United States. He said that he was taking leave in order not to distract from the important work of the Prime Minister. Several Israeli lawmakers had called for his suspension since the posts on Twitter appeared. Ukraine's infrastructure minister has accused anti-corruption detectives of colluding with his political opponents after he was put under investigation for corruption. The probe into infrastructure minister is the highest profile case since the National Anti-Corruption Bureau was set up after protest. In 2014, brought a pro-Western government to power, promising sweeping reforms. The minister defended his record and refused to resign. His party said the probe was meant to discredit the government ahead of elections next year. A Chinese official has said that Beijing is not mistreating Muslims in Xinjiang province, but is putting some people through training courses to avoid spread of extremism. 
Reports of mass detentions of ethnic Uyghurs and other ethnic Muslims in China's far western region have prompted a growing international outcry, prompting the Trump administration to consider sanctions against officials and companies linked to allegations of human rights abuses. UNICEF has said the conflict in Yemen has made the war-torn country a living hell for its children. A UNICEF representative in Yemen said more than 11 million children or about 80% of the country's population were facing the threat of flood shortages, disease, displacement and acute lack of access to basic social services. UNICEF said nearly 400,000 of the people are acutely malnourished and they are fighting for their lives every day. Saudi Arabia and UAE have imposed a blockade on Yemen to prevent the Houthi rebels from smuggling weapons. China has welcomed an invitation from Washington for a new round of talks to resolve trade tariff disputes. China has said talks and consultations are the right choices to solving the China-US trade frictions. According to the report, Treasury Secretary Stephen Munich can uh, send the invitation to his Chinese counterpart for talks in coming weeks with the time and the venue still to be agreed. Meanwhile, U.S. President Donald Trump has said there was no pressure on U.S. to make a trade deal with China. Members of the Pussy Ride protest band have said their colleague and a prominent anti-criminal activist Piotr Bezro is seriously ill and in hospital. The band members have suggested that she may have been poisoned. 30-year-old 30, 30 Bezro staged a brief pitch invasion during the Soccer World Cup final in Moscow in July. The Bezlov and the others served a 15-day sentence for running onto the pitch in front of the president. Vladimir Putin, a stunt they said was meant to promote free speech. Pope Francis has ordered an investigation of an American bishop accused of sexual misconduct and accepted his resignation. The bishop who resigned is Michael Bronsfield on the Diocese of Wheeling, Charleston, West Virginia. The announcement was made as a pope was meeting U.S. Catholic Church leaders to discuss a fallout from a scandal involving a former American cardinal and demands from an archbishop that the pontiff step down. The Catholic Church worldwide is reeling from crises involving sexual abuse of minors. A lawyer representing former Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak has been charged with money laundering as anti-corruption agents try to retrieve billions of dollars siphoned off from a scandal-plague state fund. The charges against lawyer Shafi Abdullah come as a blow for Najib, who is fighting charges of criminal breach of trust, money laundering and abuse of power. Shafi pleaded not guilty to the two counts of money laundering after allegedly receiving over $2 million through checks from Najib in 2013 and 2014. Nearly 750 survivors of China's earthquake in 2008 returned to the old Russian Children's Center in the port city of Valdivostok for a revisit after 10 years. The deadly earthquake in China's southwest, then Russian President Dmitry had invited 1,500 Chinese students to recuperate in Russia, 890 of whom had been living in the center. Nearly 70,000 people died and about 18,000 others went missing in 2008 earthquake. A social activist has been on a hunger strike for the sixth consecutive day to demand the immediate arrest of a rape-accused bishop. Stephen Matthew, as he lay in front of the stage where the protesting nuns sat in Kochi City, said the nuns themselves are saying that their lives are threatened. The protest in Kerala's financial hub is gaining momentum as the local residents, activists, writers and politicians also came out in support in June this year, a nun had complained that a bishop had allegedly raped her 13 times over a period of two years.
The tribal community in Jharkhand State celebrated the 10th anniversary of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People with great pomp and revelry. People of the indigenous community gathered at the state capital, Rachi, to sing and dance to its tunes and traditional attire in a grand show. The gathering asserted the unity of tribal people from all over the country and the right over their natural resources. The declaration was adopted by the UN General Assembly exactly 10 years ago in 2007. At least eight militants were gunned down by security forces in three separate encounters in Jammu and Kashmir on Thursday, while two militants were gunned down in Sapor region. One was killed in Kakriyal area of the state. According to the investigations, the two slain militants belong to Pakistan-based terrorist outfit jaish e mohammed The Indian Army and the paramilitary forces launched the anti-terrorist operation after receiving specific inputs. A 10-day Hindu festival celebrating the birth of Lord Ganesha began with devotees offering prayers and celebrating the occasion with dance and music. Devotees in Mumbai gathered at the Lal Bagh in huge numbers to offer holy offerings and seek blessings. While devotees in western Pune city took out a procession to mark the auspicious occasion, similar scenes have played out in the other cities including Coimbatore and Hyderabad where devotees offered prayers to celebrate the beginning of the festive season. Former Sri Lankan President Mahinda Rajapaksa has said his country's fight against separatist Tamil rebels wasn't done to wage ethnic war against the Tamil community. Speaking at an event in New Delhi, Rajapaksa asserted that the military action launched was not directed towards the Tamils. Rajapaksa said that Sri Lanka has surprised everyone by total eradication of militancy from the country in 2009. In 2009, the Sri Lankan government declared an end to the 25-year-old long civil war, killing LTTE leaders and rebels.